So you want to grow your money by investing it in the Philippine stock market and gusto mong malaman when exactly you should buy and sell stocks to make profitable trades. So in this video, we'll talk about the basics of market timing to help you do that. So this is a more active approach of buying and selling stocks as compared to long-term passive investing and which can help you protect your capital from losing its value and maximize its profit potential. So today, we'll learn the basic foundation of charting or technical analysis. We'll discuss basic charting, how to find support and resistance levels, and the importance of drawing trend lines. So these three topics are very basic concepts na pwede yung magamit as you start and develop your own trading system later on. And if you have an account, so you can watch our previous video, How to Start and Open a Trading Account. So this is actually the first step if you want to invest. And once you have your trading account, you can follow yung next video to have a basic understanding of how online investing in stock market works. And for other learning topics for newbies, you can download your free ebook dito sa website na ito. And for more practical videos, so you can subscribe to my channel. Make sure to click the notification bell para aware ka for every practical video that I'm gonna share with you guys. So with that said, let's go back to our lesson for the day, the basics of market timing. But first, let's answer the question, why we should do market timing? Hindi ba pwedeng long-term investing na lang? O may wala naman akong time to do market timing. Actually, pwede naman yung sinasabi yung long-term investing if gusto mong mag-buy and hold or just do what they call save and invest and reinvest. So in this passive strategy, you invest a portion of your savings every month either in a good stock or some mutual fund. So that is still doable naman. But just make sure lang no na you have proper guidance when doing it. But for those who have the time and desire to actively manage their stock, so this video on market timing can help you. So why do market timing? Well, the primary reason is that the market moves up and down. Diba kung dire-diretso lang naman yung pag-akyat ng stocks, then wala tayong magiging problema. All you need to do is buy and wait and then sell. But the reality is, stock prices move up and down and sometimes these up and down movements can be very big. So what we really want to do is to rise these up and down fluctuations and possibly to earn from them. And yung ideal scenario na gusto nating mangyari is we want to be in the market when it is moving up and of course we want to be out of the market when it is moving down. Remember we decided to invest in the stock market to earn money and in the Philippines, right now, there's no way to earn in a market going down. So we want to maximize the opportunities available in the fluctuation of the prices of stocks. For example, here in this slide, let's take a look at Jollibee. So ito yung kanyang price chart. And we can see from this chart na umakyat yung price ni Jollibee na 142% from 2013 up to early 2019. So which means double the money yung investment mo in more than 5 years time. However, after that, nag-crash naman siya from the peak ng 53.19% in roughly more than one year. So we can see if nag-invest ka from 2013, tapos hindi ka nakapagbenta ng 2018 or early 2019, come 2020, parang walang nangyari sa perang in-invest mo. So break even ka lang. Instead na tumubo ka na, in case na nagbenta ka dito, so yung pera mo, yung potential profit mo is naging bato pa. Ang masama pa is pag nakabenta ka sa tuktok, so malaki na kaagad yung lugi mo by this time. And take note, we are talking about the stock Jollibee here, which is a huge company na part ng sinasabi ng blue chip companies. So here we can see na even though blue chip yung company, walang guarantee na magiging profitable na agad yung investment mo. So there's a proper way of doing it. And market timing allows us to maximize itong price action and make us minimize yung potential losses. And ideally, gusto natin makabili sa baba and makabenta sa taas. So with market timing, we can do exactly like that. But we have to remember that market timing is not a crystal ball. So we will not do price action prediction with market timing. Hindi tayo manguhula. What we'll try to do is to use market timing as our tool that will help us see what the market is exactly doing if it is trending up or down so we can react and respond properly. So now, let's start with the basics of charting. So on this next slide, I shared the sample price line chart, which is the simplest form of charting. So you have the price in the vertical axis, and you have the time in the horizontal axis. So very familiar na kayo dito. So in this line chart, we simply connect each successive day's stock price. 
Now, pwedeng may question dito, what price are we talking about here? What price are we plotting in this chart? Well, what we are actually plotting is the stock's closing price. And what do we mean by closing price? So in the Philippines, every trading day, which means Monday to Friday except banking holidays, our market is open from 9.30 a.m. up to 3.30 p.m. And meron lang tayong market recess from 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. And at 1.30 p.m., nag-resume yung ating trading. But during this market open or trading hours na tinatawag, constantly nagpa-fluctuate yung price ng isang stock. At 9.30 a.m., meron kang opening price. And then, pwedeng umakyat, pwedeng bumaba. Until 3.30 p.m., you will have your closing price for the stock. So, sa mga news and coverage na makikita and malilinig mo, when you hear that the market or the stock close at some level, it means yun yung price na naatay ng market or ng stock when the market close at 3.30 p.m. But it doesn't give you information how high or low yung naatay ng stock during the entire trading day. The next trading day, pwedeng mag-open yung stock at an opening price different from the previous closing price. So, depende na yun sa yung prevailing demand and supply. So, back to the line chart, what we are plotting here are just the closing prices. So, if on May 11, 2020, ito yung kanyang closing price, pag tinignan natin siya doon sa daily chart niya, isang point lang itong whole trading day doon sa kanyang daily price chart. For example, we have here the two-week price data ni Jollibee. Again, all we have to do is plot these prices and connect the points. And if you do it with a longer time period, then you'll get something like this. So this is the real chart showing the closing prices ni Jollibee from December 2019 up to May 2020. So yung broker nyo most likely meron silang charting applications. So later on, I'll show you how to exactly use it. And again, the limitation here is we don't see the price action in a trading day. We can only see yung closing prices. And that's where the concept of candlestick comes in. So this is a sample of a candlestick, and this candlestick allows us to see the price movement of a security, so any security, no, not just stocks, given its time frame. So in every candlestick na makita mo, meron dapat yung time frame, and meron siyang way to identify four data, which is yung low, yung close, yung open, and yung high. So yun yung tinatawag na OHLC. So going back to the intraday chart, Kanina, we have here the opening price and then you have the closing price at 3.30 p.m. But this time, with candlestick, we will also take note of the highest price and the lowest price attained by the stock on any trading day. So that is OHLC. And if we draw the candle for this trading day, then it will look something like this. So meron ka ditong low, which is nakatapat doon sa low mo. You have your opening price at this level of your opening price. You have closing price at this level. And finally, you have the highest price corresponding to the highest price attained by the stock in this trading day. So, ganun lang siya kasimple. So, yung kaninang line chart ni Jollibee will now become something like this with the use of candlesticks. So, again, each data point now, previously closing price lang siya, has become a candle. So, mas visually appealing na siya and you can see more information. So briefly, let's take a look at the anatomy of a candlestick. So here we have the trading range of the candle, which is from the lowest price up to the highest price. And then we have the wick of the candle, or also called the shadow of the candle. So those are the vertical lines coming out of the rectangle. And finally, you have the body of the candle. So this marks the opening and the closing prices of the stock. So again, each candle meron yung time frame. So pwedeng 1 minute, 30 minute, 5 minute, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. So meron ding yearly. And dalawa yung pwedeng maging kulay ng iyong candlestick. So if the closing price is higher than the opening price, then we color the candle color green. On the other end, if the closing price is lower than the opening price, then we color the candle color red. So, for example, if you have a daily candlestick in the Philippine Stock Exchange setting, then ang time frame natin is from 9.30 a.m. up to 3.30 p.m. And if the closing price at 3.30 p.m. is higher than the opening price at 9.30 a.m., then we get a green candle. On the other hand, if the opening price is higher than the closing price, 
then we get a red candle. So very simple idea. Similarly, for a weekly candlestick, so we have Monday to Friday as our time frame. And we get a green candlestick if the stock has a closing price on the Friday that is higher than the Monday opening price. So that's color green. And we have a red candle if yung closing price on Friday ended lower than the opening price on the Monday. And these candles can have different forms. So what I've been showing you are called color candles. So my green and red. And some charts, they use what we call hollow candles. And still another way to convey the same information are bars. So here you have vertical lines connecting the high and the low. And then meron ka lang tick marks to designate yung open and closing prices. So yung open prices mo will be designated by a tick mark in the left. And yung closing prices mo will be designated by a tick mark in the right of your vertical bar. So for us to see this in action, let's go sa charting ni COL Financial. So inside your COL Financial account, pwede nyo ma-access yung charting under quick links and then go to charting. Or pwede nyo rin ma-access yun through quotes and then stock information and then meron ditong charting. Okay, so let's click on this one and lalabas yung charting application. Ayan. So right now, what we're looking at is yung price line chart ni Ayala Land. So again, we're only looking at the closing prices. And if we want to change the chart type that we use, so you just simply have to go here and click your preferred chart style. So this, for example, is yung candle. So every point has now changed to a candle. So my red and my green. And then if you hover on every trading day, may kita mo naman dito yung yung OHLC, the open, high, low, and close. Pati na rin yung volume and yung date. And if you want to change the time frame of your candlestick, so pwede nyo naman i-change yun dito. So currently, I'm using one day. So if you want to see naman yung one week candlestick, so yan, automatically mag-a-adjust siya. And then meron din si Call Financial na one month. Ayan. And then other brokers, meron silang one year na candlestick. And then itong 6M or 6 months, so this is actually the time period of the price action that you are looking at. So right now, I am using 6 months. So that is from around December 2019 up to today, May 2020. So that is 6-month period time. And if you want to adjust naman yung time period na tinitingnan mo, so you can, for example, gawin mo siyang 3 months. Uh, if you want to see the 1 month, ayan. And meron ditong YTD. So from the start of the year, this is December, up to today. So pwede mong makita yung relative price action niya. And then, for more active traders, meron ditong intraday. Ayan. So, intraday, we have one minute candlestick and so on and so forth. And if you want to see yung different chart style, so, pwede mo siyang gawing bar there. And then, pwede mong gawing colored bar. So, kung bumaba siya, that's red. Kung umakyat, that's green. And meron ding hollow candle. So basically, the same information lang naman yung pinapakita. And then yung mountain is simply line chart, pero meron kang shaded area under the curve. And you can also check itong tinatawag na colored line. And then meron din silang baseline delta. So baseline delta, basically line chart din siya, pero meron ka lang dinesignate na baseline. So ganun lang kadali mag-navigate ng chart. So you can adjust yung time frame ng iyong candlestick. You can adjust yung time period of the price history na tinitingnan mo and you can adjust yung chart style. And dito naman sa studies, there's an option for you to add yung mga tinatawag na indicator. So in our next future video, so pwede kong i-discuss sa inyo what are the commonly used indicators that can help you read the information that is hidden in this price action. Now that we discussed the basics of charts and candlesticks, so let's now talk about another key topic in charting which is support and resistance. But before we proceed, if you're enjoying this video and want us to make more videos more often, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to show your support. Also, if you have questions or thoughts while watching this video, then please do share it in the comment section below. So going back to support and resistance. So what is support and resistance? So the support level is formally defined as the price range at which there is an increase in demand for a stock. And because there is an increase in demand at these price levels, so this price area brings an increased buying which stops the stock price from falling down. 
On the other hand, we have a resistance level or the price range at which there is an increase in the supply of a stock. And dahil marami namang nagbebenta at this level, hirap makaangat yung price above this resistance level. So this means we can use this support and resistance levels to identify areas or range for probable reversal or pause of a prevailing or existing trend. So to make it more visual, let's look at this simple price chart. To determine the support and resistance level, so all we have to do is to draw horizontal lines at price areas where we can see that there is price reversal. So kung saan nagbabounce yung stock mo, that is where you can establish your support. And kung saan naman nauuntog or nagbabounce down yung stock mo, so that's where we can establish yung resistance level. So mas maraming bounce and mas significant yung bounce and mas madaling makita or mas obvious and mas recent. So mas okay and mas strong yung support and resistance na nadodraw mo. So that means there is a bigger possibility that this support and resistance levels will be respected and observed in the future. So again, the support level is the price range at which there is an increase in demand and yung resistance naman is kung saan merong increase in supply which stops the price from going beyond the resistance level. And with the simple idea about support and resistance, so it makes sense to do these basic strategies. So first is to buy into support and second is to sell close or near to your resistance. So with following this simple principle, mababawasan mo na agad yung risk when you do buy and sell stocks because you will actually stop chasing prices when it goes near the resistance. So all you have to do is to wait for the stock price to go near your support and then that's where you can buy. And then once umaakyat siya dito and hindi naman siya lumalagpat sa resistance mo, instead nag-start siya bumaba, then that means it's an opportunity for you to sell. And then another principle about support and resistance is yung tinatawag nating rules reversal on breakout or breakdown. So what are these breakout and breakdown? Now through time kasi it's possible na naubos na lahat ng sellers and all that remains are buyers. So pwede rin na, na may lumabas na story or catalyst. So pwede may lumabas na balita and investors now think that the stock is cheap even at the resistance level. And when that happens, the stock price can go beyond the resistance level and what you have is what we call a breakout. As a result, there can be a sudden surge in prices after breaking out. And this provides a buying opportunity for traders. So either you can buy on breakout, so somewhere here, or you can buy after the breakout, or you can buy on its bounce from the new support. Again, when there's a breakout, with the role reversal of support and resistance, this previous resistance has now become your new support. So these strategies now you can choose depend on aggressiveness mo. So yung buying a breakout is yung pinaka aggressive because you're actually coming in early and you can be a victim of yung mga tinatawag na false breakout. Yun nga lang pag dumire-diretso ito, so pwede naman nakakuha ka at lower price and mas malaki yung upside mo. And then ito naman yung moderately aggressive, yung buying after the breakout, so hindi ka bibili at the exact breakout but instead you wait for the stock price to inch up a bit higher and yung pinaka conservative naman is itong buying on bounce because somehow you have a confirmation that you now have a new support from the previous resistance so with this strategy mas maliit yung risk mo to becoming a victim of a false breakout and ang kapalit lang naman ito is you can also miss out on some opportunities in case magdire-direct yung umakyat na yung stock mo after it broke out of its resistance level. Now, ano naman itong breakdown? So basically, breakdown is the inverse of a breakout. So when sellers overpower the support level, then the stock price can experience a breakdown. So this happens now when the stock is no longer attractive to the investors and they start selling a lot of shares, which therefore brings the stock price even lower. And as the inverse of a breakout, a breakdown makes the former support as a new resistance line. So how to react during breakdown? Well, your default response should be to sell. So you can either sell on the breakdown point or once mag-recover siya and bumalik doon sa iyong previously support level. Take note that we don't buy at breakdown even if we think that the stock has become cheaper. So actually, maraming gumagawa nun, no? So believing that the stock is already cheap, they are buying when the stock price is falling down. 
Again, the breakdown can bring the prices even lower. So you don't want to do yung tinatawag nila catching falling knives or buying it on its way down. So stocks can fall a lot lower than you think is possible. And when they are crushing, there must be a good reason why. So what you need to do is to wait for the stock to consolidate and establish a new support level before even thinking of going back in. Again, as a summary, so with support and resistance levels known, we should buy into support and we should sell close to resistance. And there's a rule reversal when you have breakout or breakdown. And when that happens, we want to buy on break of resistance during breakout and sell on break of support during breakdown. So just be aware lang that there can also be false breakout or false breakdown. So just be ready in case. So for us to see this in action, let's try to draw support and resistance lines dito sa chart ni Jollibee. So in this price chart ni Jollibee, again, for us to draw yung support and resistance level, so all we have to do is find yung mga swing highs na tinatawag or yung mga peak and yung bottom and draw horizontal lines. So dito sa select tool, we only have to select horizontal. And then hanapin natin yung mga swing highs. And then, for example, this one is a high. So this is a resistance level. This one is another swing high. So this is another resistance level. So kung napansin nyo, no, tumama rin siya dito. And then here we have an obvious support. Dahil nag-bound siya and significant and obvious and madaling makita. So yun lang yung basic criteria about drawing support and resistance. So, dapat mayroong significant price action. So, in this case, nag-bound siya ng paakyat. And then, nung wabot siya dito, bumaba naman siya ng malaki. And then, madali mo siyang makita and madali mo siyang ma-identify. So, we want to see support and resistance levels na madaling makita because gusto mo na nakikita rin siya ng ibang traders. And then, here's another support. So, pwede natin i-plot yan. So, again, nag-hold yung support na yon at this level. So now this is a good support. Unfortunately, so nagkaroon ng breakdown dito and therefore bumaba ng bumaba yung stock price ni Jollibee. And then now this is now establishing a new support. Okay? And then dito may kita natin na itong previous support has somehow acted as your resistance here. And then pwede rin natin magplot tayo dito ng ating resistance on this level. So this is a resistance in this time period. But we can see now that it has actually acted as support in this future period. So ito yung sinasabi natin, role reversal between support and price. So kapag umakyat yung price mo beyond your resistance level, so diretso akyat siya, and kapag bumaba naman siya, so your previous resistance here has now become your new support. And then meron kang another resistance, support, pwede ka actually itong magplot ng resistance here, so nag-down siya. Then as you can see here, uh, umakyat siya and then this one, nag, uh, bumaba na naman siya and yung previous resistance mo has now become your new support. So ganun lang yung principles behind support and resistance. And here we're looking at yung 5-year chart ni Jollibee. Pero pwede nyo naman bagayin yung time frame nyo. So instead na 5-year, gawin natin for example 6 months. And we can see here na yung mga na-establish nating support and resistance is actually being established here. So pwede rin kayong mag-draw ng support dito because this is a low. So, hindi naman kailangang sakto, no? Again, we're talking about support and resistance levels as price range or price area. In fact, pwede kayong mag-drawing ng rectangle if you want for your support and resistance area. And here, pwede ulit tayo magdagdag ng another support and resistance line here. So, this one nag siya support and this one nag siya as resistance. So, ganun lang yung principles between support and resistance. So going back, so far what we have discussed are called horizontal support and resistance levels. So these are static levels because hindi nagbabago yung support and resistance mo. But there could be other kinds of support and resistance and we also have what we call the angular resistance or yung trendline resistance. So mamaya makikita natin ito. And then meron ding psychological support and resistance. So these are whole number levels, surprise, which sometimes hold because they are easy to remember by people. And then we also have what we call dynamic support and resistance like yung moving average. So it is called dynamic because nagbabago and nag adjust yung support and resistance level mo every day based on price changes in every trading day. 
And lastly, meron din tayong tinatawag na Fibonacci retracement or percentage retracement to find possible support and resistance levels during correction or rallies. So in our future videos, we can discuss each one of these further. But for now, let's discuss yung next simplest concept, which are trends and trend lines. But before we proceed, if you are enjoying this video and want us to make more videos more often, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to show your support. Also, if you have questions or thoughts while watching this video, then please do share it in the comment section below. So two basic premises of chart analysis are that markets trend, so nag trend yung market, and that these trends tend to persist. So it's so easy to see trends because they are characterized by a series of highs and series of lows. And they are usually classified into three categories. So we have a major trend when this trend lasts more than a year. Secondary trend if you have a period of one to three months. And a minor trend if it has a period of a couple of weeks or less. And we can see either three kinds of trends. So we have uptrend, we have downtrend, and we have sideways. So if we remember that trends are characterized by a series of highs and lows, so madali natin itong makikita. So let's start with an uptrend. So you have an uptrend when you have an overall upward movement of your stock price. So the characteristic here is you have higher highs, so these ones, and you have higher lows, so these ones. And here we can do a trend line by connecting the lows. So the line is drawn in such a way that all the price action is above your trend line. So hindi naman kailangang magkakakonek lahat ng lows. So just find two stock lows in your uptrend and connect it. So mas okay if meron kang third point to make the trend line a more valid trend line. So mas malami kang makonek, mas maganda yung trend line mo. And then you can also add yung tiyatawag nating price channel. So this is just a parallel line to your trend line and then iaangat mo lang siya touching the highs and this line can give you areas where to do profit taking. So what exactly should we do in an uptrend? Well, we basically buy and hold stocks that are in an uptrend. Obviously, so the best possible time is when the uptrend is just about to start but this is not always easy to find out. And we have this general principle that a trend, whether uptrend or downtrend, will continue until it is proven otherwise. So meaning mayroong pang definitive signals that the trend has stopped or reversed. So yun lang yung idea of an uptrend. So now let's go to downtrend. So in a downtrend, you have an overall downward movement of your stock price. And one main characteristic here is you have lower highs and you have lower lows. And in this case, we can do a trend line by connecting all your highs. So the line is drawn in such a way that all of your price action is below your trend line. So again, hindi naman kailangang magkakakonect lahat ng iyong highs. So just find two stock highs in your downtrend and connect it. And if my third point ka, then it becomes a more valid trend line. So now, what should we do in a downtrend? So during downtrend, we basically avoid stocks that are in downtrend no matter how big or cheap the company is. So why do we do this? Because we know that the downtrend can remain and will continue until my definitive signal ka na nag-stop na yung downtrend mo and forming a new trend or an uptrend. Of course, gusto mo kasi na you're out of the market during this phase since you'll just be wasting your time and your money and your attention buying into something that is on its way down. So pag bumili ka dyan, pwede mong isipin na mula na yun but actually pwede kang mag-antay ng matagal before you can have some gains. And in the Philippines, unfortunately hindi pa allowed yung tinatawag na shorting which is a way for us to earn in a downtrend market. So you really have no choice but to get out. So if yung uptrend means the stock is going up and yung downtrend means the stock is going down, so in sideways, nothing much is happening. So wala kang higher high and higher low and wala ka ring lower high and lower low. So this happens when there's not enough interest sa stock and walang conviction yung mga buyers and sellers and they simply want to wait what will happen next. And this also happens when the stock is doing consolidation after a previous up or downtrend. So what we can do here is to buy on support and sell on resistance as we discussed earlier. As long as maganda yung potential mo. So kung 3% lang yan, masyado nang mababa yun. But if it's 10 or 15%, then that provides you an opportunity 
to do what we call range trading. And it's also good to add here that the longer time a stock moves in a sideways, so kung mas matagal siyang nag stay in a sideways trend, then the stronger its breakout or breakdown will be in the future. So magandang tandaan ito when spotting stocks, so maghahanap ka lang ng stocks na maganda and matagal siyang nag-sideways and then you wait for it to go breakout para makasakay ka doon sa magandang paparating na uptrend. So again, those are the three trends that we can have and just some additional ideas to help you regarding trends. So first, the longer a trend line has been in effect and the more times it has been tested and respected, then the more significant it becomes. So kung saglit lang yung trend line na nagawa mo, then hindi siya ganun ka-powerful. So mas mahaba yung trend line mo and it has been tested more and respected more, then it becomes more significant. And second, the violation of a trend line is often the best warning of a change in trend. And that is actually the heart of market timing, which is to identify when the trends are changing. So before we end this lesson, now let's take a look at some charts to apply what we have learned so far. But before we proceed, if you are enjoying this video and want us to make more videos more often, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to show your support. Also, if you have questions or thoughts while watching this video, then please do share it in the comment section below. So what we are now looking at is yung price chart the BPI and for us to draw our trend lines, all we need to do is find out kung saan ba yung mga swing highs and yung swing lows and connect them whether it's an uptrend or downtrend. So again, for example, in a downtrend, all we need to do is draw a trend line that is connecting all our highs such that all the price action is below your trend line. So here we can see a downtrend. So we can draw a segment. So just click segment here and then connect your high. And then as much as possible, tatamaan yung mga candles mo. So it doesn't matter too much, no? So it's not a big deal whether you are connecting yung wick or yung body ng candle. Because again, itong trend line just gives you an idea. And hindi naman ito talaga kailangang exact numbers. Here, may kita natin na at this point, so nag-break siya and therefore, nag-change siya from downtrend to uptrend. So, a steep uptrend. And then here, meron kang kaunting sideways. And then again, meron na naman ditong downtrend. And when we're making an uptrend, so we're connecting the lows naman. Okay? So, madali natin nakikita yung change in trend. And then here, so nagkaroon ka ulit ng uptrend. And then, meron kang trend reversal here. And then, meron ka ulit uptrend na maiksi lang. Okay? And then, somewhere here in this region, meron kang sideways. So, pwede yung gamitin itong rectangle to establish yung sideways. Okay? And then, na-break siya dito. So, once na-break yung trend mo, you can use yung principles ng support and resistance. So, here, nakikita natin, meron tayo ditong possible support. So, we can draw a horizontal line here. So, nag-hold siya dito. Okay? And then, nung na-break siya, so, nag-act siya as resistance, pero hindi niya nakinaya, so, nagkaroon na siya ng breakdown. And then, nag-establish siya ng bagong support dito. And then, nag-establish siya ng rally. Here, may short rally. Pero right now, na makikita natin na it is actually having a sideways trend. So, pwede tayo mag-draw ng rectangle just to highlight that this stock is currently undergoing a sideways trend. And pwede yung makita yung numbers dito, no? yung potential gain. So, this is 14%. So, which means pwede, kayong, pwede yung i-consider na bumili near the support and then sell uh, near the resistance and substantial naman yung possible gain kapag nag-materialize yung trading plan na yun. Okay, so ganun lang actually yung ideas between trends. So all you need to do is find yung uh, series of high and series of lows. And again, if you have a downtrend, uh, you connect the highs. And if you have an uptrend, you connect the lows. And then kapag na-break yung isang trend line, then that can be a signal na nagkaroon ng trend change, either trend reversal or pause of a trend. And then pwede siyang mag-consolidate. And then if na-breakdown, then that's another change in trend, and then wait for it to consolidate before you think of going back in until makapag-establish siya ng bagong support. And then, pwede ka rin mag-go uh, back sa history para makita mo yung bigger picture. So, actually, uh, may kita natin dito. So, if we do a 5-year chart, for example, gawin natin itong weekly para mas malinis. 
So, pwede ka rin mag-draw ng iyong mga support and resistance, pati mga trend line. So, here may kita natin, meron kang higher higher low. So, meron kang, resistance, uh, meron kang trend line dito. Okay? So, ang nangyayari dyan is nag-appreciate siya and then nagkakaroon siya somehow ng correction. So, bumabalik siya dun sa iyong trend line and then nag-appreciate and then may correction ulit. And then, as much as possible, bumabalik siya sa iyong trend line until ma-break siya and that signals a new trend. So, now here we're talking about a major trend because uh, more than one year actually yung ginagawa nating trend line. And then, sa downtrend, so you can connect here yung iyong downtrend. Ayan, so connect the highs. And then meron lang ditong quick uh, uptrend pero naging downtrend siya ulit. So take note that each time na mabreak yung trend line, so what you would want to do is to find the next possible support. So limbawa ito, so na-break nga ito and then somehow na-break nga rin itong this uh, support mo. So pwede ka kasi maglagay ng support dito. No? Pagka-break nitong trend line, and then na-break itong support. So, hanap ka ngayon ng bagong support. So, hanap ka ng bagong support. So, here's a new support. So, mag ka ng horizontal line. And somehow, na-respect siya dito. And then, nag uh, umakit siya ulit. And then, na-break na naman yung iyong support. And then, hanap ka na naman ng bagong support each time na nagkakaroon ka ng breakdown. So, here, pwede ka mag ng support here. So, yan. Nag-act siya ng bagong support here. And then, nag-act din siya as support here. So, you see the use and value of cutting your support and resistance and your trend line because you can see yung general uh, direction and yung possible consolidation levels ng yung stock. So, yun lang actually yung lesson natin for today, the basics of market timing. And just to emphasize, now, this is not a perfect system. So, these are just tools and not predictors. And it's up to you know, how you can use these ideas to develop your own trading system moving forward. And if you like this video, so make sure to also watch yung ating previous video, some investing tips and tricks on how you can maximize the use of your broker's platform and resources you can get from it. And don't forget to like this video. So if you have questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments below. And make sure also to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you get updated for our future videos. So thank you guys for watching and see you in our next video. God bless us all. Bye!